to get us over to the demand side of the equation. And it would be great to just hear your reflection on where do you need to look in order to understand enough, right? So, I mean, you have the Pareto principle that 20% gives 80% of the results, right? So maybe it's the same dynamic in, in the demand side, but just one story, which I find fascinating is that if you just expect that people in India and Africa and China, et cetera, Asia wants to get to middle class, you expect them to use energy, right? Mm. People need to burn food, they need to heat up their houses, etc. So if you're just talking about math and facts, don't you have like a gigantic demand side regardless if you forecast ahead to some sense? Uh, absolutely. And, and there's, there's uh, you know, I, I, I would um, encourage listeners to, to go into Google. And I think the website is called Mercator Earth or something like that. I think, but it's basically it's in looking at global maps based on where, where basically the the size of the continents are made up of a uh, number of people, number of cars, uh, number of uh, middle class people, and so forth. And then you'll see how unevenly distributed kind of wealth is in the world. Uh, and you know, there was an, uh, a person I had a discussion kind of over Christmas where there was one who uh, made me aware of, uh, of an interesting fact. Uh, you know, kind of overpopulation is actually one of the biggest challenges we have um, and is very difficult to deal with, of course. Um, and uh, But uh, overpopulation becomes less of a problem if more of the world population reaches middle class because then you automatically get fewer children or at least statistically so so world growth will uh, or population growth which is a huge issue for us will actually start to 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 um kind of ease uh the more people we can put kind of up the the uh, the standard of living chain and um you know i've seen kind of various analysis and uh, mckinsey has a, an extensive analysis on this and they expect over the next, uh, I can't remember if it is uh, the next 20 years or 30 years, um, probably 30 years, probably towards 2050, that we have 1.4 billion people in the world, which predominantly lives in China and India, which are expected to reach middle class. And this is not middle class in Norway, where basically we're all middle class. Uh, you know, kind of that's the floor. But uh, this is like a global kind of middle class where probably the income is around twenty thousand dollars a year or something like that. But but it's um, and and you know even though they're not all going to drive cars, they're going to use products that are made of oil. You know where oil is one of the the um, and we don't have a replacement for it yet. So so maybe we can build you know do some bio organic uh, stuff that can make your fleece you know for sure, but uh, it will demand energy. Do we have the energy? You know, it's, it's it's all these kind of questions. And and so so I, I I'm you know with regards to oil demand on the, with the long goggles on, yes, hopefully we're going to plateau at some point, and and it's very likely we're going to plateau at some point because alternative energy is going to dig into kind of uh, the, the oil and the hydrocarbon part of it. But we're going to plateau. We're not going to fall off a cliff. So, and if that's at 130 million barrels per day, 110, 120, I don't know. But in the meantime, very few tankers are being built and this still needs to be transported. And, and that's one thing, you know, when we have a coffee table discussion here in my household uh, with three kids who are in the prime kind of uh, green shimmer age. And they discuss it at school and all that stuff. And sustainability is, is uh, you know, is a normal word being used in the sentences. You know, one thing that can actually, which is an argument that people tend to forget, in tankers, we actually transport an enormous amount of energy really efficiently and distributed around the, uh, the globe. So, so it's, uh, you know, if you were to put that oil that, you know, say uh, a VLCC can carry into trucks, you know, you would need probably a thousand trucks and they would emit, uh, you know, a hundred times more. So it's, it's um, this is a, you know, tankers, although we don't like it, you know, it's uh, kind of transporting really heavy crude 
on the oceans, which are really vulnerable, um, and all that. It's it's a it's still a very efficient way of distributing energy. And since not all continents in the world are blessed with oil, um, you know that's the best way to 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 deal with it.